Hey guys, so last uh, video there about my clutch. I was talking about the Dalton weights, how they'll be really nice to change. So with the Daltons you get your wrench here and these little uh, Allen head set screws. Obviously the different lengths equals different uh, weight. So you can mix and match how you want. But the nice part is when I'm going to go out in a couple weeks here, like this weekend, I'm going to be riding around so I could just leave them in. When I go out to the mountains, I'm just going to take this, get in there, and pull out just the first weight out or the set screw, turn it, pull this one, turn it, pull the next one, and I'm ready to go. Simple as that. Then when I get back, I just have those set aside, put them back in, done. Really, really nice. It's going to be awesome. Um, with my 13 here, I had individual weights, so I always took them out, put them in, took them out, put them in. These adjustables like this, I like that. I like that uh, I'm not screwing around with magnets, anything like that. So I'm happy with that. That's that. I know a lot of people have been asking about my bag backcountry access that's why i decided to get i got it because i want to carry an extra shovel on the back so when you get the bag it comes with webbing inside i took the webbing out you undo these bolts pulls off and then you got your clips on the bottom because you could ratchet them and attach them to your bumper here to hold it on that's i don't think that's a very good system i think this is a lot better um, a lot of people say that they take these out drill right through your tunnel and then it's held on there permanently i get that but i want to be able to remove mine so what i got was the link setup from skidoo so you get these clips and then it just pulls off So what you need for that is you need to be able to get these brackets. There's a couple different companies that sell them. Um, they're adapter plates, I guess. Uh, I got mine from iTech. They're in Canada. I believe they're out of Montreal. Uh, so for shipping and currency exchange and all that just made sense. Um, they come in different colors. They're nice CNC cut. And then you buy the link. I don't know what these are called, but you buy these. And then they just sit, you screw them down to that. And then obviously when you get your plates, they give you a template, square it all up and then drill your holes. And then you just attach that and that goes through the tunnel. And then when you get the bag, you need to get these, uh, again, don't know what these are called, link latches, I don't know. Uh, the bag does not have the holes to drill through, but inside here on this plastic piece, there are holes pre-drilled on the plastic. So you just drill through and then you put your bolts through and that's that. Uh, one thing a guy could do, which I haven't done, I'm not sure if I'm going to do it. Silicone every hole that, that there would be. I didn't silicone them. So I'm not too sure how waterproof this will stay, but that's the nice thing about the pack is I could just take it off my sled at the end of the day, bring it into the hotel, whatever, dry everything out. These compartments, they're supposed to be waterproof. So that'll be nice, keep all the stuff you don't want to get wet in there. I don't got nothing in here at the moment. This, I think is a must have for any of these crossovers. I still have the full length coolers. You get a lot of ice buildup all in here. And so you just give it a couple of wax with a nice rubber mallet and bust it all off. Lots and lots of ice all in here. So that'll be nice. I, that's, I keep that around because I just want to bust all that off. Uh, another big thing with this is, <laughs> sorry, just give me a second here to close this back up. It depends on how you want your pack to sit on your sled. Uh, 
So I wanted mine this way. I wanted my handle facing outwards and I want to just to be able to sit on the back, flip it open, open it up, use it. So make sure when you attach these uh, locks that they close backwards. Okay, if you attach them and they're facing forwards, you hit a tree branch, something like that, it snaps them open. Uh, when you put your bag on, you can turn it. I could put it on the other way, not a problem. But if I close them like that, yeah, it's okay, but I'm driving through and then all of a sudden, boom, I hit something, the bag flies off. So that's just one thing to be aware of. Like I said, I didn't want it this way. I didn't want my shovel end pointing inwards because I got mine right pretty much near the very back of the sled here, right on the light. And that is so that when we're out west and we think we're gonna have a bigger day and I need to carry some extra fuel, I could put still a 10 liter jerry can right here, just strap it down with the bungee cords, whatever, get up to the cabin, dump it off, and then if I need it on the way back, then I have it. 10 liters isn't much, but it's better than nothing. Uh, so that's why I did that. That's why I mounted this as far back as I did. Just so I could have that a little extra room right there. Oh, uh, what else? My rear snow flap. I just made it removable. I want it removable for going out west, so you know you got a lot more to be able to grab onto when needed. You don't need it. I don't need to be getting stuck with it down in the snow. I want to take it off. Uh, so what I did was you drill out all the holes, all the rivets. I couldn't use this one, so I just drilled right next to it. And then drill out the ones at the back. And what I used was rivet nuts, riv nuts, rivet nuts, whatever you want to call them. These little guys here. So you drill out your hole, you stick this through the hole, this flat side sticks on. And then you use this tool, which you don't need to use a tool, but I got a kit with the tool. You put this in, slide it in, you, the handle squeezed right now, but it would thread in there. You push it into the hole, you squeeze the handle, and it collapses this part just like a rivet would. It just collapses it, and so that stays nice and tight in there. And then I got all those little handles. The size I used was 10 by 24. There you go, 10 by 24. These are for the handles and they're just five eighths long. Uh, they're just called clamping knobs. Um, these are aluminum, I believe, so the inside is kind of uh, soft. So I was trying to use these and uh, these handles, you can't really grip them very good, so they are a little tough to get off. If I could find like a T-handle in that size, maybe that's all I'll buy. So I can grab on a lot easier, but you know, you'll just thread it out. That one's good. This one, I think, oh, that one's good. One of these is pretty tight, I thought. That one's pretty tight, so I could get it with with a bit more with a, just a wrench or whatever monkey wrench or whatever just clamp onto it just get it to move so yeah they're just in there they sit on there like that and then the back side here they bulge and they bulge shut and you just thread through so yeah that'll be nice It'll be nice that I could take off the flap going out west and then uh, when I'm back here so I don't told it well so I don't melt down the sled because it'll get way too hot for one uh, especially running the trails but I also won't piss off the wife 
I already did that enough. This thing does throw a lot of snow behind it. I might uh, try to get a video of that. So yeah, that's that's that. That's kind of uh, what I did. I know a lot of people are wondering what to do with the flap. This was my solution. Was it the right solution? I don't know, but it's it's on there good. I'll be able to take it off, like I said, and then just put it back on. Uh, I was going to look at using these half clips, but all the stuff I had for this was uh, readily av readily available, so that's what I used. Uh, not much else to say. Everything else is still all the same. Um, yeah, we'll see. I know we did confirm we're going out west here in three weeks, so that'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to a lot of shooting done out there and do some comparisons and whatnot and just see how this is out there. Uh, these are my guards. So Jensen, really nice. This is a brake guard. Other side I got the chain case. Just because they do hang down quite a bit lower. Good quality, nice and strong, nice and light still. Uh, this side for some reason gave me a little bit of trouble putting on, but I still able to get it put on, it's pretty straightforward. Not, not a big deal at all. Stupid exhaust gasket. Yeah, and then today I did end up putting uh, just the MBRP can on here. Sorry. I'll see you here. I'll move a couple things fired up. It's not nearly as loud as my SSI. And it's got a nice deep tone to it. And I think it will be good for what I want. We'll see what it's like on the trail, obviously. deep tone to it I like it uh, it came off of this sled just a 13 it still fit I was able to make it fit everything's okay uh, one of the things I really like doing running carabiners on all my tethers get rid of that cheap plastic thing these are cheap too these are I don't know from the dollar store or something like that they don't gotta be expensive but so much easier to use and that's that guys uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video it gave you a little bit of an insight to what i've done to the sled uh, if you have any questions about the snow flap about the bag the link setup just write it down in the comments and uh, i'll try to do my best to get back to you as soon as possible and uh, any other questions same thing just leave them down below and yeah thanks for watching